Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India These two lectures, uh, this one and the next one, we are going to talk about very important topic uh, that is building smart villages and smart cities. So, these villages uh, or, and the cities, uh, they were not built, they have just grown in a haphazard fashion. So, particularly cities, although they may have been planned, but uh, people have not expected the growth, uh, the unprecedented growth that has happened. And so, and also the cities, they were planned during the times there were no uh, ICT technologies, no information technologies, no internet, no smart uh, uh, devices, no Wi-Fi and so on. So, the water networks, the power networks, the health networks, all these networks that were built for the cities, they were basically uh, ancient and they were designed of maybe the knowledge and uh, the times of that day. But uh, today, they can be made smart. What is smart? Smart means you can, smart actually means intelligent. You can make a device intelligent. What is intelligence? Intelligence means that the device can make its own based on the information that is given in the environment, in its environment, it can make a decision on itself. So, this is how do you build these, these kind of using new technologies, smart cities, smart villages, that is the topic uh, uh, that we are having today. So, it is a very important topic uh, uh, and we will start with uh, whenever you think of a village, you think of Mahatma Gandhi. And in 1801, 18 January 1922, he has written an article in Harijan, that is the magazine. And he said the following, the best, quickest and most efficient way is to build up from the bottom. He is talking of villages. Every village has to become a self-sufficient republic. This does not require brave resolutions, it requires brave, corporate, intelligent work. So, you can see his vision by proper interpretation of what brave, what corporate, what intelligent means. If I interpret brave as entrepreneurial and risk taking attitude, I mean today if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to have a startup, you have to take, uh, take a risk. You know one thing is to join some company, get earn uh, a monthly salary and so on. But on the other hand, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you build up a company and you provide jobs for others, that is highly risk taking attitude. So, corporate to me, when you say corporate, corporate to mean setting and meeting strategic goals and objectives. And intelligent means IT enabled governance models called smart nowadays. So, we implement Mahatma Gandhi's vision. So, if we interpret properly what it is today, like brave, then uh, enter corporate and entrepreneurial attitude or intelligent work, then we are implementing uh, this uh, Mahatma's vision. So, let us see how uh, we can we can do these three things, the entrepreneurial work, the, uh, the corporate governance as well as the uh, intelligent use of smart things in the building up villages and cities. So, let us look at um, the contents or first, way, first of all what is the motivation for doing this looking at smart villages. Now, the, there are two motivations here, one is there are several villages, 600,000 villages in this one and villages are very important, we will look at that. But another one is whatever ecosystem framework that we have developed for supply chains earlier, it is applicable in a larger context. In the larger context of 
villages, cities, countries, and so on. So, to just to show the, that the larger context of the frame, framework we have learnt in the previous lectures, I want to do this, that how to develop a smart village. And look at what is the ecosystem for the smart village and develop the grip framework we have learnt earlier. And I will do a case of a village called Pochampali village. This is near Hyderabad and it is one supposed to be a model village and I will do a case and I will conclude the villages chapter. And afterwards, I will apply the STEM framework to build a smart city. And smart city is healthcare system and university ecosystems are important, I will do that. And the others can be done in a similar fashion. And finally, end up this uh, uh, two hour lecture with the third service revolution and what it should be. Now, the fundamental point that uh, we should see we have learned the ecosystem for a supply chain or service chain. But village is, is a different this one. How do you apply this ecosystem framework to a village? I mean that is a, that is the fundamental question. So, what is a village? I mean in the context of what we are talking here today in the, in the ecosystem framework, supply chain, service chains and all that, we will consider a village is nothing but dozens of a bundle of supply chains and service chains. So, if you accept that definition which it is true, then you can apply the ecosystem framework not only for the village, but also for each service and each supply chain, each product, each service that the village supplies. So, with, with that let us uh, start looking at uh, what is the motivation. The motivation is India has 600 and one the 610 districts and 200 of them are considered to be backward and 600,000 villages with 125 villages which are backward. This comes to and about 800 million people in India live in villages and at least half of them are below 25 years. So, this is called demographic dividend and uh, who had to provide all the kinds of facilities. One thing is to move all of them to, to the cities where then crowd them uh, uh, in the cities. But on the other hand, it is very important to create these facilities in the villages so that uh, you know they are happy in the villages, they keep living there but keep getting the same kind of facilities and same conveniences. The government is taking responsibility for uplifting the rural and economically poorer regions. And there is lot of public spending to improve the infrastructure, water, sanitation, education and all the other things. So, basically today the rural uh, development is uh, the government's responsibility. And however, these effects are disparate, fragmented and piecemeal. Not much improvement has been achieved in most of the villages. Now, there is what is called Panchayati Raj. In other words, each village has a Panchayati board and this is more political than uh, 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 than professional. So, basically they try to uh, try to do uh, some improvements in the village, but it is not strategic. In other words, there is no plan, there is no growth plans and so on. And there is a need for designing and building smart villages, which are independent in providing welfare services and employment at L well connected to the rest of the world. It took, one should understand what Mahatma's vision is, it should be corporate, it, it, it can be independent republic, but as a republic it should be connected with the other sides of the world. So, basically the village is well connected, it is a part of the global uh, country, it is a part of the world and all the services and supply chains within the village are connected globally. So, if you produce a product, you should be able to export it to foreign countries or you should be able to get marketing, the demand, the demand in the outside the world should be able to translate it into your uh, work, into your inputs, into for your uh, supply chains. So, basically this is what our motivation is for studying this. There are several government programs for in the villages. There are programs in agriculture, 
there is the national agriculture development program uh, i mean uh, accelerated integration irrigation benefit fertilizer subsidy bank loans free electricity and so on so if you because most of the villagers have the agriculture as the primary occupation so they have this kind of government gives lot of subsidies there major programs to improve the employment so in the uh, villagers there is the employment problem because there are no small and medium enterprises so there is the public distribution system that is the pds which is a ration if you have a ration card then you can get through this but the the ration shops and all that they basically provide some employment that is what is called M N Ragos, that is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Development Guarantee Program, where people about the, uh, uh, who are employable, they are basically guaranteed employment. They are paid, uh, they are paid some money um, per month for a uh, hundred days a year, and depending on uh, the possibility, and they are given some employment. And there is a national food security bill to provide food. Uh, for for them, so but that is about the improvement employment and major programs to improve the nutrition security in this. In other words, in the villages, there is how the children are malnutrition and they are pregnant mothers who do not have uh, proper care. So there are lots of programs, midday meal programs, integrated child development program, Annapurna scheme uh, for senior citizens, <coughs> the nutritional program for adults and girls and emergency feeding program and all that. So, they are basically programs to provide uh, nutritional security, provide employment for agriculture. But these are all programs from the government and these are all in the hands of the panchayat and, uh, and the other government officers and uh, the result is I do not think they are working right. I mean the, the lot of these programs they get um, they don't get very good reviews but still you know it is just government giving away money uh, to this it is not as though they are trying to take the families take the people and giving them enough education enough employment so that they can glorify by themselves and also villages how long can you subsidize how long can government keep on subsidizing these villages and population keeps on growing and so the, it is a better idea to grow the village so that it becomes self-sufficient rather than giving subsidies. So our vision here which is Mahatma's vision is to make it a self-sufficient to let it grow by itself rather than giving subsidies. So what is a smart village? So we will treat a smart village as a bundle of services of dozens of services delivered effectively to the residents and businesses in an effective manner. So we will see what these services are, their water power, I mean there is nothing new here. And these services could be location specific depending on the demography of the village and occupation of the residents. So this basically is, is an important factor. We are looking at, we looked at the investment climate of a country and the investment climate of a state in India, any of these 28 states in India, but it is possible to take that investment climate concept to a village. So let us do that, I mean before, before doing these services such as power, water, buildings, homes, retail, healthcare, etc. were built several decades ago, if they are all they are built. These are basically the village, uh, this one or uh, or uh, thatches, they are like slums and new designs, technologies and management models should be used to upgrade the existing ones and build the new ones. This requires standardization use of IT and sensor networks. So, it requires strategy, integrated planning and above all monitoring and execution of the activities using appropriate governance models. So, whatever we have learned for the supply chains, we are going to apply it here. So, we are going to develop a governance model and so on and compare it with the panchat model that we have here. <coughs> so, we use the, the following things, I mean we have developed uh, in the, uh, when we developed the supply chain ecosystem framework, we mentioned there are five STEM forces. Usually people talk of STEM forces, S-T-E-M, but 
with a different interpretation we have term here science S yes, stands for science which is science research that generates new and improved products and new technologies that is T stands for technologies that is internet search, solar uh, energies and so on and new engineering materials and designs come out every day that is E stands for engineering R st uh, stands for regulations which is institutions including government and social institutions play a very important role in service change regulations and policies with regard to infrastructure, climate change, immigration, trade, outsourcing require attention. In the village context, regulations regarding the, the agriculture, regulations regarding SME industries, regarding the climate change, they basically uh, uh, require attention. And new management techniques like business models such as uh, such as outsourcing, cell direct uh, supply chains and so on, these are the management techniques. We have to see what are these management techniques for the particular village. Is it possible uh, uh, to, to apply some of these to the village? Now, for example, telemedicine, you know, villages and may not have uh, hospitals and all that, but telemedicine is one of the possibilities where uh, villages can be used. Uh, for this one and similarly e-retail through kiosks and post offices. So there are several things that the villagers can use uh, in these forces. So let us try and apply this all this term framework for supply forces to uh, this village. So first thing we will do is to map the village ecosystem. What is the ecosystem of the village? Of course we have the supply chains or service chains, we have the resources institutions and delivery service mechanisms that is the general ecosystem and we have to these three define the ecosystem. Now what is the ecosystem? If there is lot of land and there is water and the land is fertile then in other words you have land resources and you have a delivery well connected to the uh, to this one through canals and so on and the institutions, uh, the social groups permit, then you have agriculture based ecosystem. But on the other hand, if you have say mines or, or coal this one, that is the resource here, coal mines here, then you will have a different delivery mechanisms working here. On the other hand, if you are very close by uh, 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 a city then providing services to the city will become this one. So you have to have innovation, coevolution and all that as we saw earlier that this requires any kind of innovation that you have. If you want to start a doll factory here making making dolls, <coughs> Barbie dolls and you want to export it to United States then do you have all the resources, uh, do you touch uh, your government permit, do you have the delivery mechanisms, all the connections to do that. So let us look at uh, which one by one. So we will map the uh, the investment climate of a village is the policy, resources, infrastructure, institutional and behavior environment that influences the returns and risks of the investment. The investment climate differs depending on the significant occupation and its natural resources. The primary occupation of the village can be farming, it can be aquaculture, it can be working for industries such as apparel, leather goods or toys. So you can see what is the kind of uh, village that you are uh, you're talking of. The village can be a tourist location, for example if you are near uh, Taj Mahal near Agra or you are a pilgrimage center like if you are close to Tirupati or a place of historical importance then etc. Mines, forests, ocean shores or river banks can be part of the natural environments of the village. So depending on what your environment is you should be able to define both the services that you require for the village and also the kind of industries you can start and and what are, how do you basically have the delivery mechanisms and so on. So let us uh, uh, map the smart village uh, here. Uh, the smart village is uh, 
that uh, there we have this various kinds of service chains. <coughs> Let us look at each of them. We have water purification, then we have affordable housing. Now, affordable housing requires a lot of innovations. In other words, they have basically poor huts, most of them. And uh, so, if you want to make say like uh, 1 lakh car, 1 lakh house, uh, you have the scale, but you should be able to innovate in terms of the concrete and other material slabs, doors so that uh, it is possible to make uh, a house within within that uh, this one. But of course, there is the retail, uh, there, there are Kerala shops uh, in, the, in the village, but they need an improvement in terms of uh, what is needed, what is supplied to them because a village cannot have a distribution center. The retail center has to be sub has to be um, connected to a distribution center which is located elsewhere, and there should be a possible movement of goods between the distribution center and the retail. And of course, the children need education. That is the primary education level. In other words, when when you go into secondary and higher education, probably they can move out to the towns. But what is needed certainly is the primary education and rural employment schemes and reg M and regas and so on. So basically, you have to have employment for uh, the people. In this vocational training, vocational training. If you are in the doll, doll factory or uh, if you want to be a cab driver, or if you want to have a restaurant and so on. So this is basically education to employment kind of vocational training that is needed. But of course, farming, farming, um, you know, people think farming does not require any uh, expertise, but this is not true. So basically, there are several uh, things that you need to know about farming. And uh, so there is uh, some uh, intelligent advice that needs to be given by agencies to this. But of course, we have uh, the SMEs which are microfinanced. This depends on the this one. So basically, depending on the village uh, uh, investment climate, you have all these service chains. If you want, you can add more which is particular to that particular, uh, particular village. Um, but these are all the kinds of service chains. Now, uh, the institutions are uh, the, the government uh, has these institutions which are for example, have the state governments, uh, there are the uh, there are the officers of the revenue officers and the district collectors and so on and there is the village panchayat which is basically uh, part of the political uh, schemes and of course, there each one has the regulations and their citizens and NGO groups and so on. So, basically the institutions here it does not play, uh, it does play a role in when the subsidies are given to the village as well as in terms of the infrastructure development and in terms of farming giving the seeds and so on. So, basically they are farming cooperative society kind of thing. And of course, we have the land resources, water, agri resources, health care, and human resources, UID, and then financial resources through a post office if at all, high school and other educational institutions at the district level. So, these resources for education, for finance, and also for agriculture, because we are assuming, of course, indirectly that uh, the ecosystem uh, is agriculture based ecosystem, which is true in most of the uh, uh, villages. And of course, you have to have the water, energy and power networks. These are networks for everyone and you are just using those networks. So, but you should have connectivity. Every village may not have been connectivity connected uh, to all the water and energy networks. And finally, the service delivery which gives you connections. For example, uh, post office based services, online ticket booking and retail and so on. In other words, if uh, you want to try a uh, go by train or, or by air or something, then you can get the tickets. E cask spoken web. Spoken web is where you know the most of the one should understand that uh, 700 million people of cannot they don't know how to read and write. 
So, when you do not know how to read and write, how are you going to uh, uh, use internet or communicate or write letters and so on. So, but on the other hand, they are intelligent people, they know how to speak in the natural languages. So, what you need are the audio visual technologies to communicate. So, this means they should have a cell phone or let us call spoken web. If you do not have a cell phone and if you want to meet somebody else or you want to you want to get a carpenter or somebody instead of uh, advertising on the internet sending a message to everybody and, uh, and so on, you can leave the message on the spoken web and people listen to that and they respond. So, it is possible that uh, this one and of course, food courts like uh, uh, if you want to provide uh, uh, secure food which is nutritious, then if you have food courts which are uh, basically advised by nutrition, nutritionists and they run, um, uh, they run nutritious food, then that is one thing. And of course, you have to have procurement, uh, warehousing and marketing for agriculture and as well as the SMEs. So, in other words, whether whether it is uh, whether you have an SME or not, you need procurement, warehousing, and marketing. So, you need those services, and of course, IT and mobile services. You need both the truck transport for movement of goods outside, or you and you need bus and other train transport to move people outside. So, the connectivity to the outside world is important. So, this is the the village ecosystem that that we have. So, for this ecosystem, we have, we have to now, you can easily, easily look at the service chains, you can look at the resources, institutions and so on. The institutions are all done by the Panchayat Raj and all that. So, this is the cosmic view of, of a village. Now, how do you, the question, big question is, how do you make this village smart? So, the service chains are some of the service chains like water, power, health care or standard and could be a part of larger services. In other words, they, they could be uh, uh, initiatives like health services and all that. Affordable housing, retail education, skill based training, rural employment, farm to market could be specific to the village. Now, it depends how many people have house, what is the uh, the kind of environment of the village. Mapping each of these and identifying strategic players and coordinating these actions could be crucial for success. So, how is the power? Does it have power connections? Does it have water connections? Does it, what is the, where does the water come from? Is it safe drinking water? So, you have to basically map for each of them and, and you have to coordinate this one. Most of these are government controlled. So, you have government officers uh, coordinating their actions and all that. So, these services could be redesigned to be smart using cloud ICT and data analytics. In other words, who is living in the village with their identities, with their land and their land ownership and can all this be collected data? I mean, there were efforts earlier to collect the data. Can it be put on a cloud? and do the data analytics to find out who are the poor people, who are the rich people and what do they do and so on. So, is it basically to make make smart and give them uh, the kind of orientation and can your cloud be used for education? In other words, can you have um, a network, a TV kind of network which will educate these people? So, there are several service chains that are possible and of course, the resources are of course, the land, water or natural resources education, finance, seed, fertilizers, etc. are necessary resources. They need to be produced by the government. The government support from various programs provide are cash or subsidies. So, the earlier programs that we have seen the government uh, support uh, for various programs, it provides either cash or subsidies. It does not provide you the service. If you have the service, it will, it will provide the subsidy but it does not provide you with this. Entrepreneurial environment would require microfinancing organizations, supporting industries and orchestrators to connect SMEs to the global value chains. <coughs> so, if you have uh, this uh, entrepreneurial environment, if you want to create, then it requires microfinancing and orchestrators to connect to the global value chains. 
So, the resources basically uh, 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 what we have here and what is usually conceived as to be the resources in a particular village are, are different uh, for each uh, this one. And uh, what about the delivery services? Uh, telecom, IT, mobile, e-kiosk and spoken web are delivery services. And post office serves both as a logistic service provider and as a bank. The post office is the richest bank in India. So, it basically has you can have a post office account and it also delivers uh, the parcels as well as the letters. So, now uh, the post office can also act as a uh, um, since it has an internet connection and all that it can also act as a service provider for reservations and all that. Uh, the railway reservations, train reservations and payment of cash transfers and so on. So, basically it is the post office can be up, certainly be upgraded to to be a smart post office and uh, which uh, to, to provide the logistic service. For example, if you want parcels of freight which comes on a bus uh, which is a passenger bus which is coming from some headquarters, they can be delivered to the post office and post office in turn can uh, deliver it to the to the village uh, uh, um, uh, villager and then collect the money from him and pass it on back. So it acts as basically somebody who is uh, as a middleman uh, in this, as an intermediary, uh, as a di digital intermediary in between uh, the various uh, uh, businesses. Food court supplying nutrition food is essential for countering malnutrition. Now here one thing is the you provide the subsidies and so on but the food cooked food or, or uh, mm, uh, prepared food in safe packaging packets supplying that is essential for this. And warehousing and marketing services as relevant or needed both for agriculture and SMU oriented environment. So, it is important to, to, to have both the warehousing and this one. Of course, these can be shared services. In other words, you need not have to have a warehouse for each village, but depending a group of villages can have a warehouse. And similarly, a group of villages can have a, a wellness center, a group of villages can have marketing services, but as long as they are reachable either by phone or, 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 or by uh, uh, personally, then they are okay. So, that is about the delivery services that we have and connectivity to the external world of course is important uh, on this, that is through either trains, buses and so on. And of course, the institutions, the village, panchayat, state and central governments are the regulators and providers of basic services. So, but our we are going to see that the governance model that we are going to suggest is going to be much, much different from the existing governance model. So, that is one of the fundamental changes that needs to happen. And NGO social groups organize health care and food security programs in the villages. I mean, there are lots of, lots of these programs that come in. And the farmers are subject to APMC and other acts. There are lots of other acts that are there. Uh, in the villages, for example, the farmers cannot directly sell to the uh, to the retailers and so on. They have to <coughs> they have to sell uh, to through the mandi uh, and so on. And similarly, if they if you are a small and medium scale enterprise, then you are subject to those particular laws. You have to be registered company, and if you want to export, then you should follow the export regulations. You should. Uh, if it is food export, then you should follow the hygiene and other issues. And if it is dal export, then uh, uh, you know if you are using paint, uh, then the paint has to be followed. So there are several rules and regulations that uh, for each of these uh, 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 industries, and people have to follow those. So formulate growth strategies for the village. Formulate growth strategies for the village to make it self-sufficient taking into account the investment climate and protecting native occupation and heritage of the village. So, this is and if a village is a tourist location, then supposing we are talking of a tourist location where it is nearby uh, the Tirupati or nearby uh, Taj Mahal or nearby uh, 
very very famous uh, tourist locations. The growth strategy should be towards construction of restaurants and hotels, development of transportation services like cabs or buses and vocational training to act as guides, security and working as chefs in restaurants or Kirana shop, shops selling unique products made in the village. In other words like dolls, uh, if it is uh, this one pharmacies and hospital services in a mobile van etc. So, basically you can think of services which are useful nearby and that can be your occupation. And the residents can be trained in providing these services and the funding agencies, microfinance institutions or NGOs can be approached. So, basically once they, there is the growth plan for, for the village and the village uh, you know you have to finance these activities and also you require industry support and you require NGOs depending on whatever activity you want to do. If you want to have food courts then you can certainly approach uh, uh, institutions. If you want to start an entrepreneurial uh, center startup then you can have approach the microfinance institutions and so on. So, that is the formulate the growth strategies for the village. Of course, we have the grip framework. In other words, now having formulated a village uh, this one, then you need to uh, apply uh, the performance, uh, the risks that are possible and what are the kinds of innovations that uh, this one and also what is the governance model. What is the, how do you measure the performance of a village? So, measure the performance of individual services and the village. I mean individual services you have you can measure if it is water, power and so on the, by the continuity, by the quality of uh, delivery and so on. So, and but uh, when you are talking a village is a bundle of services, how do you do it? For each service the metrics such as timelineness, reliability, accessibility, user satisfaction, innovation in services etc. are measured. So, you can measure these things for each service that is easy. Village performance defense depends on the effectiveness of the individual services rendered, vocational training, its impact on betterment of skill development and employment, new innovations improving welfare, increase in connectivity to outside markets, growth in trade and per capita income. All the components of balance scorecard must ultimately meet the objectives of the smart village which are to improve the utility services, investment, climate, enhance, promote economic development. So, there is what is called a balance scorecard which is used in management literature for uh, the performance measurement. We have mapped the village this one, village uh, performance measurement using a balance scorecard, I will present that now. So, balance scorecard has four different activities. The first one is learning and uh, the first one is customer perspective that is reliable service, connectivity with outside world, improve service quality, skill development etcetera. And the second one is the financial accountability for this one and that is attract business funding, integrate SMEs into global value chain, promote business mix. The third one is internal processes, upgrade utility services, standardize processes, improve supply chain connectivity, growth oriented strategy formulation and so on. And learning and growth, this is the future, enhance primary education, provide vocational training, provide employment opportunities, encourage entrepreneurship. So, basically balance scorecard has customer finance, internal processes and learning and growth that is which is the kind of a future learning for the future. Now, all these things should lead to the aims for this village. So, we have given for each of them the whatever it means for the village and enhance living conditions that is one of the strategic themes, improve investment climate that is another strategic theme, enhance job security and promote entrepreneurship and connectivity with other villages and cities. So, if these are our primary objectives, strategy themes, 
whatever how is our performance in all this contributing to that that is ultimately the performance uh, uh, this one that uh, uh, that will come out so the balance scorecard actually is a good device good methodology can, that can be used particularly when you are talking of uh, uh, bundle of services like uh, uh, we are dealing with here and of course there are several innovations uh, for example audio visual interfaces for all applications that's because as i mentioned uh, you know most people cannot read and write uh, so you require either they can speak and uh, they are intelligent and they can respond so you require audio visual interfaces local language support this is one thing there are 18 languages in india and the local people the villagers they only the local they are educated only in the local this one so it cannot be english or any other national language like hindi equipment that can withstand harsh environments you cannot have uh, uh, temperature sensitive environmental equipment in the villages because that is going to be very expensive because even the power that is needed is uh, to the to the houses and all that is at a premium so you cannot have this equipment that is low cost medical devices that is the kind of thing that the ge has developed the low cost housing how do you develop low cost housing processed food and food courts with hygienic and affordable nutrition nutritious food investment climate based on innovations so investment climate based innovations so you want to innovate only those things that are applicable here i don't want to have a 3d printing innovation to the village what do i do with it so this is the kind of thing that is needed so if you look at the innovations i think it's a big challenge to find out these innovations uh, and develop that village so there are a lot of risks of course failures in the supply chain due to lack of communication and management expertise that's very common weak infrastructure resultant operational inefficiencies availability of resources from government and other fii's due to lack of confidence and inertia in adopting anything new due to lack of awareness and education among the villagers so there is a lot of inertia uh, this exploitation by political parties corruption and mismanagement of funds so once the funds have to come and so on so there is a lot of mismanagement so we look at the grip framework here and what is the governance model the governance model uh, is uh, the following so you have the manager utilities so we have looked at uh, the the village you so know for example you have water power affordable housing and transportation and so on for example if you look at water power transportation uh, then these are basically uh, the utilities which are which are controlled by uh, the central agencies or the state agencies and affordable housing and they basically you need to have somebody who can handle those there is healthcare education retail and waste disposal so these are local services you should have a manager local services and you have manager employment development uh, like uh, rural schemes vocational training smes and a post office or a, or a localized bank which acts both as an bank as a transportation and so on so issue is that the kind of services that that we have said in the village i mean if you want to, you can add more services if you want to, you can add another manager and so on but when i say manager it's not like an official job here but it is somebody who is responsible for the performance of these uh, things so how do you how do you get to the performance of this so you have an executive director Well, let's call him director who about about the management, uh, this uh, manager of these services, and there is uh, uh, business development. Why do you need business development here? That's because if you want to develop SMEs and connect them to microfinance organizations, connect them to venture capital fundings, and if you have the SMEs which are connected to the global 
value chains. Maybe make them a part of the global value chains. Then how do you do that? So to do those things, you need to you need to have a business development division. So these kind of things can be shared across villages. It need not have to be the same business development. But what I'm saying here is these are not employment opportunities, but you should have the village should consider this particular thing and it should not be like ad hoc somebody comes and then this one. It should be a strategic plan that goes on. But then what happens to uh, the current Vijayat Panchayati board and all that. So you have an advisory board, you have the advisory board with government representatives, with industry CEOs who are there in this and with funding agencies and the village panchayat. So this is like uh, you know this is really uh, Mahatma's vision here. This is like uh, the corporate board and he is the, here is the CEO. He has the business development uh, manager and you have uh, uh, the HR, uh, you have uh, the manager of these local services and so on. But See, the, the, the point is it could be, you can say it is a corporate model and all that, but uh, corporate, I am not talking of corporatization of villages, but what I am talking here is getting the models that work, making models that work here in the village atmosphere, village this one and then making things work. So there is one thing, I mean we have seen that. Uh, earlier that one of the very very important things is the execution. I mean in the this is the we have talked about the supply chain uh, uh, execution but this is execution of all the ideas, execution of the vision and execution of the balance code card what you talked about. A visionary strategy that is not linked to excellent operational and governance processes cannot be implemented. So it is important that you should have you know like in the balance accord you have a strategy. You want to develop an independent uh, this one which is which can have a growth strategy for the village and your operational excellence should link to that and governing processes also should link uh, to, to those. So your governance uh, says something and your strategy is something different which happens very frequently that could be dangerous. Operational excellence may lower costs, improve quality and reduce processes and lead times. But operational excellence is important. It will provide you the services at the right time, at the right place, at the right cost and of the improve the quality and all that. But it is that is where the execution is, becomes important. So where is the future growth coming from for the country? While the fear of big change now when you, when you give this kind of uh, a vision in terms of having these villages, <coughs> it is a big change. Why is it a big change? It is a big change because you are talking of 600,000 villages. You are talking of each of them uh, you know trying to have this kind of uh, uh, big change in terms of making themselves sufficient and so on. And but what happens is and sticking to familiar markets may tempt companies to focus on bargain shopping in the urban markets. What are companies doing now? They have concentrated on urban markets. Why are they concentrating on urban markets? Because they have people who are middle class, upper middle class and they can sell whatever they are producing today and they have the infrastructure and uh, it is easy to do uh, whatever whatever you are doing to sell this. But if you want to do this and then sell in, sell in the, this one, you have to develop products which are low cost, you have to deliver the products where the infrastructure is weak and, and so on. So basically the, the, you know, the, the companies need to go from urban to rural markets. So, and building a position in the growing village markets will provide important sources future growth to this one. I mean, although it is a tough job, but if you start developing the villages as smart village markets, then companies will go there because 
they provide important sources of future growth for many industries. There are several industries where the, uh, the, the villages provide this one. For example, in the, LR, in the energy area, the solar energy is one of the very important things that you can, uh, you can uh, see that is happening in the, uh, 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 this one. And similarly, the food industries, food processing industries. So you can have at various districts in a, in a fertile land area, you can have various food processing industries make them big. Several other industries which are, which are possible, which does not require this one, lot of IT companies can go there and start this. So there are several, several of these companies that can go, the growth can come and so on. So I mean having done this, what we had to do is to, to uh, look at a particular uh, example. In other words, so far what we have been doing is to do uh, a sort of uh, an abstract setting of a village which is possible, which is good. We are trying to be uh, as uh, close to reality as possible, but still our aims are big. Now, is it possible to do it at all in, 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 in the real world? That's the question we are going to look at uh, in the Pochampalli village uh, in our next lecture. Thank you.